Hello, I'm Sophie D'Souza of Sophie's Stained Glass. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about my studio and what's in it and how I keep everything. So we'll just start here, that's, that's, how, that's where we are. Um, I have a lot of these kinds of Tupperware boxes because as I work a job, I like to keep my glass to hand and all these different boxes. So I might have maybe four panels in one window and I might have panel one here, panel two there, another box with panel three. Um, all this is destined for another job I haven't quite got round to yet. So that's quite useful. This is my general bin. I've got two bins, a general bin and a glass bin. And um, this is where I keep all my old lead that's gonna be recycled. So I take that for recycling at some point. These are my boxes of lead. They have to be stored horizontally, really, because otherwise they get misshapen. Um, I've got every size that I can get, pretty much. And it goes from six mil, I mean, I suppose you can get four mil, but I, I would very rarely have a use for four mil. So I have six mil, and then I, it goes all the way up to 25 mil. So these shelves, are where I keep small sundries and I've got them labelled. So I've got felts and these tend to be with a two mil nib so I can um, draw my cut lines. I have a white pen for drawing on dark glass. I have knives, craft knives and blades. I have screws. I have little bits of lead which I keep because when I'm building a panel rather than put the, the nail against the glass I like to just Put a piece of lead. Put a piece of lead between the um, the glass and the nail, just so I don't chip the edge of the glass. So I keep these, but to be honest, I have way more than I need. This is where I keep my uh, flux, my solder, as well goes in here. So my old bits of solder, which eventually get stuck together in a long line, I use them all up. There. I stick them all back together like this and I do have a video showing that's what you do with your old solder. So my solder and my um, tallow goes in here and also my tip tinner which is um, something you use on the tip of your solder iron to keep it shiny. Toothbrushes! Oh, more small lead. <laughs> I obviously need to consolidate. And uh, horseshoe nails. Never have too many of those. So up here, I keep my solder. So I always have lots and lots of solder. And this is all 50-50. I've just done an experiment um, and discovered that this actually works just about as well as I need it to. You can go up to a 60-40, but I didn't find there was a huge difference. Keep my ruler here. I keep my favourite scrubbing brushes here. And then I keep all my consumables up here. So my wire for tying, uh, my linseed oil, my white spirit, my glass cleaner, my wipes, my water, my patina, you name it really. So um, <laughs> I roughly know where things are, honest I do. And then just over here I've got my trusty polishers, which are my, they're actually floor polishers with coir, um, spinning brushes and they polish up the lead on a window beautifully. Um, so this is my glass bin. So um, that builds up and then I empty it into a bigger bin outside. So for my battens, because you need battens to make your jigs. Up here are old uh, cartoons from stained glass panels I've made and here are some glass racks so they're ordered by colour and size I don't have that much black so the small and medium I think I put together for that then this is I think this is medium sized I call it berry I call it pink here but basically it's any sort of pink or berry colour small pink this is flashed blue 
and blue that's already be cut, been cut into border strips because that seems very popular. So these are oh, these are the bigger. Uh, well, this is darker berry, I think. Yes, I also use a lot of that colour. Dark blue, light blue, uh, light green, dark green, browns, browns and flesh colours. Um, this is, oh, what's this? Bullseye. This is bullseye glass. I don't know why I've got a bullseye there. Um, this is dark green. This is light blue. This is dark blue and this is purple. Now down here I've got some more of my drawers. So this is my cutting. This is my cutting drawer. So it's got, um, well, it's not got a lot except lead cutters and uh, glass cutters in there. But anything I use all the time I keep out. This is a miscellaneous. So it's got brushes and tape measures old fids and things in there. This is pens and pencils. This is uh, plasters, you need a lot of them. Got some fuses, calculators, and things like that. Um, glues and more plasters. And stirrers. And here's gloves. This is tape. So I, I do find this all weather tape quite useful. Um, pastels for colouring in my cartoons. Oh, that's a mosaic drawer for when I do mosaic. And that's um, a shelf for my uh, small kiln. Then we've got cloths. Brushes, lots and lots of scrubbing brushes. And my um, soldering iron drawer. So here I keep my rulers. I don't know why I've got a sash clamp there, but I have. And um, my squares as well. I keep them. Um, these are just things that uh, jobs I've done, maybe rejects in some way. Things that fell over and broke or got spoiled in the kiln, like that. So down here we have my glass box, my light box rather, obviously you need one of those. And underneath is a filing cabinet for paperwork and catalogues and things. Now this is my painting station and it's got all my paint and all my brushes and it's to the left of my light box and if I'm doing a lot of painting I will move it because it's on wheels to the right of my light box because that's the direction that I dip my brush and you should probably avoid keeping your palette on your light box because it will make your paint dry too quickly it's not it doesn't stay usable for long enough so this is my general hoover and this is my very very expensive um, able to suck tiny particles out of the air hoover um, and that is used to extract air from my sandblasting cabinet, which is here. I'll just mention this, which I love, because it saves me having um, cables stretching from the wall to my workbench. This is my cleat, which I use for stretching my lead. This Oops, sorry, can you get through? So this is, oh, there's another polisher. I don't know what it's doing there. Um, this is my uh, pressure pot. Uh, and it's, it has the sand in it. Well, it's not sand, it's silica. And it goes through to the sandblasting cabinet. And I have more storage. So these I made to keep my palettes and my glass paint in. And they do get a bit dusty. But on the side of these, it tells you what each of them, what each of them are. For some, for example, might be black mixed with water, some might be black mixed with glycol, some might be black mixed with oil. So that just helps me organize my palettes. 
underneath my workbench is more glass storage. Now I'm lucky, I've got a big workshop and I've got a lot of space to store my glass and I know everyone isn't always that lucky. And all I'd say is that you've got to be a bit ruthless sometimes because you can end up keeping every small bit of glass because you think, oh, that might be just right for something, you know. Um, but when you start to run out of space, you just have to go through it and get rid of the small pieces. So I've got small and medium, and these are the warm colours. So I've got my ambers, my yellows, my oranges and my reds, and I've got clear and white at the far end. Now underneath the cabinet down the sides, on both sides, I've got my large glass storage. So this is for sheet material. Um, and again, that's all just colour coded. Um, ah yes, on these shelves here, I've got tools, silicon, let me get round. So this is a box I take with me when I go to fit glass and it's got, oh let me move that. It's got everything I need for that, so it's got the hammers, nails, chisels, stuff like that. Some more tools, my drill. Then I've got whiting pigment around here. More tools. Over here, more storage. I have electric cables. I have frames that I use to put glass in. I've got more tools. I've got my glass grinder, which actually I very rarely use because my cutting's quite good now, so I don't need to grind down very often. This is my sample box, which is really helpful when I go to jobs or when I'm just planning a job. More little tools I need to take out with me. This, this sort of area is tubs for mixing cement in. That's some more of the glass that um, we saw at the beginning of this video because like I say I've got another job I want to do with this. I made this glass myself so, as in it's clear with a layer of frit that I made and uh, cooked in the kiln. So I'm kind of attached to it although I really can't use all of that. I will have to be uh, ruthless one day. Um, this is my small hobby kiln and this is great for when I only have one piece to fire or if I'm doing samples. There we go. So that's obviously had something in it cooked to a very high temperature because it's gone all black. So that won't be just paint, that will have been um, frit. Uh, these are my steel strengthened lead canes. I go inside a lead cane. My battens for my jigs. This is my frit for when I do frit work. Some samples that I made. So I've got colour references. This is what the samples look like. So it shows you pale to dark and it tells you what colour it is. So that's light sky blue. It's got the code and it's got the fact that it's fine, not medium, of course. Um, this is my kiln paper, which I buy on the roll. I think it's about five pounds a meter, might be a bit more than that. This is my um, paper for drawing my um, cartoons on. These are small pieces of kiln paper that I save because it's expensive. This is all the different firings I've got programmed into my big kiln. So this is my big kiln. So there we go. That's my big kiln. Um, and this is just a bit more storage for stuff I can't think of where else to put. And here are my boards which um, some of these um, are what I might use to board up someone's front door and some of them are what I might use to build a jig on. Sometimes I, put, I build the jig straight onto the uh, workshop table and sometimes I will put it on its own board. 
I'll just say another word about my workbench. So when I designed this, I wanted to make sure it was wide enough that I could work on windows on both sides of the workbench at the same time because sometimes I have a lot of windows to do and while some are setting I can be then getting on with the next lot. Um, these tops don't last forever, in the end they bow and I've got a bit of a bow going on here, it's just got a little bit of a sink. So what I need to do is replace the top, but that's okay because this is actually a sacrificial top. It was made to be replaced. So it's not structurally integral to the glass racks below. I can just unscrew it, buy a new piece of wood, and that will get rid of the bow I've got here. But it's just one of those things on my list to do. This isn't actually a problem unless you put a glass piece of glass right on it and cut it, then it will shatter. Um, so I just know to avoid this section at the moment. Um, I think that's probably all I can say. If you haven't got as much space as this, you won't accumulate as much stuff. It's, it's one of those things where stuff expands to fit the space available. Um, if you don't have enough room for this sort of uh, storage for your lead, it's quite acceptable to buy it by the lead cane and keep it like this. Nothing wrong with that. If you don't have bespoke glass racks, I would suggest using the sort of plastic tubs I was talking about earlier. And I would, I would get them deep enough that you can stack small pieces in a small tub and bigger pieces in a big tub. But you've always got to think that you don't want glass sticking out. I mean, this isn't ideal, but I've made sure it's all facing away from the place where I walk. Because, um, obviously, it's a, it's a danger to you otherwise. Um, so, yeah, I'd say lots of these kind of tubs would be a great thing for storing your uh, glass in if you don't have bespoke um, shelving. I do also have a crafty little shelf here because <laughs> I do sometimes run out of space all over my workshop. Oh, there's one th other thing I wanted to show you. So this space over here... It's got a piece of old carpet down and I keep this place uncluttered because when I'm doing a job, uh, a big job for a church maybe, I'll go to Reading Glass and I'll buy all the, the sheets I need and I might be buying 20 sheets of glass. Now I need those accessible because I'm using them to cut my job. So I don't want to put them in my glass racks. I just lean them here and I know they're safe because this is, this is specially for it and I can just work my way through it um, and that just seems to be a, a, a nice way to work. I will say something else about the way I've stored my glass. So having said you should be ruthless and get rid of some of your glass, I find that very difficult. So this is not very beautifully stored and that's to say if I want to get a piece right out of the middle because they're so cluttered, so crammed in there, I do risk um, scratching the surface of the glass. I sometimes have to take a lot of glass out to get to the piece I want. And actually, that's the time when you cut yourself. So when you're rifling through your glass um, supplies, I'd wear gloves if I were you. I don't tend to cut myself when I'm working the glass. It's just when I'm getting it in and out. So yeah, this is probably... <laughs> really bad example of how to store glass uh, because it is too crowded um, but um, yeah that's just what happens over time anyway I think I've covered it all thank you very much for watching I hope you found it interesting seeing the way um, I run my workshop um, please like comment and subscribe